Hello guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to a new weekly vlog. I am obviously back home now. The last time I picked up the camera to vlog, I was in Costa Rica. But I'm back home as you can see, I'm officially back into the swing of things. I, I think I got back from Costa Rica at a really good time because I basically got home and then it was the bank holiday um, in the UK. So we had Friday, Monday off. Um, obviously as well as the weekend so I think it came at such a good time because I was horrendously jet lagged like I I've never been jet lagged before I've never been far away enough in a plane to be jet lagged and I kind of saw being jet lagged as oh, maybe a bit of a myth I just thought how do people get jet lagged I just thought surely it's easy just don't sleep you know go to you know eat and get up at your normal times and your body will just adjust well, I take it all back. That was very naive because my body struggled so much. It took me a good three, four days to really get into the swing of things. Like, actually, I'd say this morning was the first time that I comfortably got up at six o'clock and didn't want to literally crawl back into bed and cry. So that was a good sign. But yeah, honestly, the first couple of days, I was literally waking up and then midday I was genuinely falling asleep standing up like I was exhausted and it was so so strange to me and then also I'd get into bed at let's just say 10 o'clock and even though I'd already had my dinner at about six o'clock I was ravenously hungry like starving there was I've had to have so much self-discipline to not order pizza at 10 o'clock at night because I've been starving and I've just had to not eat and wait till the next morning and then I've woken up starving. Honestly, I d the havoc it's caused on oh, my body is just... Anyway, I finally feel back to normal now and normality can just resume. Also, for anyone thinking about going to Costa Rica, oh my God, 100% recommend. I've definitely realised that I'm definitely more... That's definitely more my kind of vibe, more so than a city break. Don't get me wrong, I loved Miami and would recommend and, you know, I will go to obviously other cities in future, but I'm definitely more of like a kind of rural, peaceful kind of holiday person, which makes sense as I don't live in a city either. I live in the middle of the countryside, so it kind of makes sense as to why I prefer those holiday destinations as well. I very much like my peace and quiet. Um, I'm not about the fast paced moving go here, then go here, then go here. I like to be a little bit more chilled. I like activities, don't get me wrong, but yeah, I like to just also relax when I'm on holiday. I feel like I've got a few little things to update you on around, well, in everything really. I'll start with a quick flicker update. Um, so the last kind of normal vlog before I went on holiday, obviously she had a little injury in the field and I was a little bit upset about it. She's completely fine. She had a few days off while I was on holiday and I feel like it's done her really well. Um, I've come back, she's been ridden every day since and she is just thriving from it. She's absolutely fine. So yeah, thank God I was just being a bit overdramatic because yeah, I don't know what I'd have done if it had gone the other way. But no, she's really good. We are both in full training mode now because our first event for the start of our season is as i'm filming this less than two weeks when this goes live it will be one week which is slightly scary i've also because of the rubbish weather we've been having all of the rain i've not been able to get her out training on grass and the event we're going to will be on grass now i know to most people watching now not involved with horses in the slightest you'll probably be thinking what is the big deal i don't get it they, you know, they live on grass, it's fine. There probably won't be any big deal, but it's just, it's definitely a mental thing that, you know, some horses go better in an arena than they do on grass because they see grass as kind of their playground and they eat it and they can get a bit excited. They can just kind of not concentrate as much sometimes. And also you have the ground to contend with. You need the ground to be good. You don't want it to be too wet and sticky and sludgy and muddy because it can be really quite hard going on them and at the same time you don't want it too hard because you might as well be riding on concrete when grass is rock solid so yeah there's all these little extra factors that um i'm taking into consideration so yeah other than that we're in full-blown training mode 
as I said, riding every day, we, she's feeling super fit at the minute, more fit than I am. She's just doing really great. I'm really excited. But um, let me show you a couple of little house updates as well. I think the first update um, is probably my filming room that I need to show you. So, I mean, it was always in the pipeline to do this. I wanted to change the colour in there because uh, the colour on the wall, well, it's the same colour that's on the wall everywhere in the house. Um, it's Farrow and Ball Ammonite. And it's supposed to be kind of like a grey beige, a greyish, we'll say. However, when it's dull outside, on a sunny day like today, although on camera it always does look quite grey, it's slightly more beige toned, I'd say, in real life. But when it's a very dull day outside, it looks super grey and quite dark. Um, and in my filming room, that's just not that great for fashion content. What it does is it makes everything look very cold and it can kind of... It can kind of distort some of the colours um, because the camera will try and compensate for the... It will try and almost colour correct it but do a bad job of it. So sometimes black will look blue on there. Um, greens and browns can sometimes look very similar. And um, like literally sometimes I'll have someone say like where's your... I don't know, where's your brown blazer from? And I'm like it's green and it's because of the colour on the camera. So yeah, I've had to kind of... Go back to basics, do a lot more of a white colour on the walls, which I didn't really want to do, but it's for the sake of filming content, to be honest. And I filmed a video this morning in there and the colours look so much better. I'm so glad we did it. But let me show you in there because um, me and Andy have basically panelled in there um, just to add a little bit of depth on the walls because the flat walls just look a bit, well, flat. And we've painted it... Um, and yeah let me show you what it looks like now so if we go through here it's a bit echoey as well because i also now don't have the sofa in here but you'll also notice as well guys we haven't painted <laughs> we haven't painted this wall yet um we just didn't we literally ran out of time and we were doing this over the bank holiday we just had you know no time left so we're going to paint this one of the evenings this week but if I spin you around to show you the rest of the room, you'll see we've panelled the walls in here. I think it looks so much nicer um, and we've obviously painted it. Um, the colour we've gone for is Farrow and Ball All White, it's called. It's not a bright white, it's kind of slightly off-white. So yeah, that's what we've gone for. Um, and then yeah, I'll just put my usual kind of setup. This is probably the setup you're used to seeing if you watch my reels over on Instagram. So I just pop my mirror there. Um, I've got my clothes rail here and then, oh my gosh, this table. How gorgeous is this table? I went back to my little antiques place that I went to in a vlog a couple of weeks ago um, because I was wanting a table in this like walnut kind of colour um, just to add a little bit of warmth because I didn't want like the whole corner of the room to just look white or just grey. I feel like adding a bit of warmth, it just, I don't know, it just, as I said, warms the area up. I really like it. So I've just styled it up with a couple of um, coffee table books. I've popped a diptyque candle on there. And then just a little, um, little vase with some faux eucalyptus. But yeah, picked it up from the antiques place. So, so lovely. Perfect size for in this room as well. And then even if I don't end up using it that much, it will go with the rest of the house so nicely. So yeah, I love that little find. Speaking of antiques, you guys might remember in a vlog a couple of weeks ago when I vlogged going there because I bought those books and things. Um, I don't know if you remember, but there was a picture there that I really, really liked of um, like three horses' heads. And I think I popped a little note on the screen um, to say I'm really having like buyer's regret now. Is it buyer's regret? Because I didn't actually buy it. I don't know. I was having regret about not getting it because then when I saw it on my vlog when I was editing, I was like, oh, I really wish I'd picked it up. But I didn't because I wasn't sure where it would go. Um, but anyway, I um, just before I went on holiday, Andy told me he got me a little surprise and... Um, yeah, he'd gone back to the antiques place and he'd bought it for me. I was so happy. So I've not put it up yet because um, one of the next things on our list to decorate is the living room. So I thought rather than start banging holes in the walls and hanging it, I'd wait until it was 
painted and then we can kind of see where we want to put it and also because we're going to panel the living room um, I want it to sit nicely in sort of like one of the panels so yeah it's not up on the wall yet but let me show you it because I just love it you'll have to excuse the light because the sun is blaring in today I'm not going to complain though but this is my new picture how stunning is that I mean I know it won't be to everyone's taste but I just thought it was so beautiful. I love the colours in it. And I do really think it will go with the vibe of this room. I feel like it ties in nicely with the fireplace. And then when eventually in here is all painted and panelled as well, I just feel like it's going to go so nicely. But at the moment, it's just sat there um, on the floor, as I said, until the decorating is done in here. But I think it's going to go so nicely. I'm so happy. I think it's hard sometimes when you see, especially like artwork and stuff, it can be really hard to picture it in your own home. But now it's here, I just think it's gorgeous and it goes so nicely. So yeah, really, really happy about that. Something else that I managed to get done over the weekend was switching over, finally, all of my like winter wardrobe over and putting my spring wardrobe in. So it's had a little bit of a rejig, a little bit of a zhuzh since I last showed you it. Um, I've left literally the odd couple of coats just because, guys, you know the drill. We are in the UK. We're not blessed with the best weather all the time. But can you see, I've kind of tried to go for a little bit of a colour coordination thing. So I've popped all my dark, um, like my black, brown items over here. Um, and then below I've got all of like my um, trousers and things. Then I've got my jeans. I've popped all my blues there because I feel like in spring I do end up wearing a lot of blue. Literally wearing blue right now. And then I've popped my bags that I tend to reach for the most here. Um, and then over here in the corner, if I spin you around... You'll see I have left out just a couple of coats and I've also hung up a couple of um, longer items. Eventually, I think there'll be a few more, maybe like jumpsuits and dresses uh, in that section as well. Here we've got the lovely nudes and the whites. This section just makes me so happy. I love it. And then over here, you can see where um, you can see where I kind of ran out of... Um, colour options and <laughs> so I have popped all of my greys here because I do also tend to wear quite a lot of grey I've found and then I've gone into the khaki and then the tiny little bit of colour I've popped here I do actually have more colourful items but I have popped them away in the drawers just so that I can keep a nice little aesthetic going on here in the dressing room and I did have a bit of a tidy up of my drawers so I have popped like all of my shorts out see there's some color over there my shorts and things i have packed away a lot of my knitwear i've kept a few bits out obviously um i think here i've popped all like my black and white yeah black white neutral tops in here but yeah i'm really liking how it's looking i think i've done a pretty good job there i filmed a video this morning but i thought i'd show you the outfits that i have been filming because it's kind of like a re oh Who's that? Sorry guys, if you can hear the bin men just outside the window. But I filmed like, basically just a spring outfits inspo kind of video. This is one of the outfits from the video. But last time I did this in my vlog, um, a lot of you guys really liked just seeing the bit of inspo. So I thought I'd show you a little bit more up close the outfits that I filmed for that video. But first, I've got a few things to unbox. So, Oh, this is their moisture surge. I love the box that they've sent it in. So they've sent me their Clinique Moisture Surge. SPF 25 Sheer Hydrator. Yeah, I've used this before. I'm sure most of you guys have seen this before as well. And then what is this one? Clinique Moisture Surge. Oh, this is a different one. Hmm, why is that different? Oh, this is the new one. There we go. So I've been sent these by Clinique, which is very nice. Also... <laughs> How cute is that? I've also popped in a little uh, a little Clinique cap in there as well. Is my head in shot? I feel like I'm almost cutting myself out. I probably look about seven feet tall. Also received this one from Colour Wow. I did actually um, sneakily have a look at this one because I had no clue who it was from. So I wanted to see who it was from. It's from Colour Wow and they've actually sent me their money mask. I've already got this and I was actually... I'm probably about three or four uses, like 
before I run out now. If you've not tried this mask, oh my gosh, it's so good. Chris Appleton, uh, it, it's like a collab between Colour Wow and Chris Appleton. It's called the Money Mask. Oh, it smells. Oh my gosh, I can smell it through the lid. It's so lovely. Just makes your hair feel, just feel really soft and expensive. Um, and it's safe to use on hair extensions as well. Oh, it's like a little, um, they've sent me like a little cute self-care kit. So I've been sent the hair mask, little eye mask, nice comb. Oh, and some pyjamas. Oh, how nice. Are they from the, oh, these are from the White Company. Oh, love some White Company pyjamas. So I've got the top. Oh, and the little bottoms. Oh quite sad how happy new pyjamas makes me but oh my god how nice is it going to be after a shower later when I've come back from riding I can put my new pyjamas on so exciting I did receive this from Wren ah they sent this to my old address oh guys I've been having such a nightmare since moving house we've put basically sorry I don't even know why I'm explaining this but it's been such a nightmare we've put a redirect um on our old address so that any items addressed to me at the old house that go through the Royal Mail will automatically get redirected and come here. Um, you can't do that for any other kind of like couriers, it's just the Royal Mail. Now that runs out in July because it would have been on for a year and honestly I'll be, I've contacted all of like you know the PR agencies, my management know like the issue that I'm having because so many parcels still keep getting sent to the wrong address. Now, obviously if they go through the raw mail, that's okay. They do make it to me. But the amount of parcels that I've lost because they've gone there, and basically, to cut a long story short, the people that are living in my old house are refusing to cooperate and basically acting like they're not receiving any parcels when I'm literally getting photo evidence that the parcels are there. So yeah, I can't even just knock on the door and ask politely if I can get the parcels because they're pretending like they're not getting them. And they definitely are. So it's been a bit of a nightmare. So yeah, any brands or any people from brands that are watching, please just send me an email. Just make sure you have got my up to date address on the system because Oh, it's causing such a headache. I've, I've been having messages from brands being like, did you receive this that we sent you? And I'm like, no. And then there's nothing I can do about it. There's literally nothing I can do. So it's just been a oh, total nightmare. But anyway, so Wren, need my new address, but they have very kindly sent me. What is this? Oh, got another moisturizer. This is their Every Hy Ever Hydrate, sorry. Ever Hydrate Marine Moisture Restore Serum. Oh, so it's a two-step process. After cleansing and exfoliating, leave skin damp before applying Ever Hydrate Marine Moisture Restore Serum. And then after applying the serum, lock in the moisture for longer to help repair the skin barrier with the Replenish Cream. Now, I apologize in advance if there is a slight echo in here, but as I mentioned earlier, there's no sofa in here anymore, so. Yeah, unfortunately I've got to deal with this echo. I'm actually looking into getting some sound boards to put in this room because I do actually quite like keeping it fairly empty and bare um, just because obviously it's my filming space so I don't want to clutter it up too much. So anyway, that problem should be rectified in a couple of weeks. But for now, slight echo, but thought I'd show you my first spring outfit that I shot. I've even dusted off the chunky sandals and put them on, which feels so nice. But I'm just wearing this blue and white pinstripe shirt from Zara. I believe, I think I got this last year, but I'm pretty sure they'll have one online. And then these jeans, these are actually a pair of my favourite jeans because the fit of them on me, I just really love. They literally touch the floor, which is perfect. As someone that does have quite long legs, I do struggle sometimes with jeans, but these are just the perfect length. They're great around my waist and they're only from Pretty Little Thing. One thing I will say is a couple of my favourite pairs of jeans have been from Pretty Little Thing, which you probably wouldn't expect, but honestly, some of their denim is just so, so good. Um, so yeah, and then I've popped on my chunky nude sandals. These are from Elias May. Had these for a couple of years now, but I just think they're so, so lovely, nice and chunky, super, super comfortable for spring. I love them. I have also just popped on a cream jumper just around my shoulders. 
I really like the kind of spring um, like preppy look and also it is quite you know functional being in the UK is sometimes a little bit more chilly so it's nice just having this that I can pop on a jumper I love cream and blue together as well I think it's such such a nice spring combination and then I've also just popped on my um, Alida white bag and I think that just tops off the look so nicely I love the little bit of tan detail on this bag I think it just brings out the um, nude of the sandals and also looks quite nice with my skin tone so yeah that is the first outfit that I've shot I love this really simple really classic next outfit I will honestly take any opportunity to just wear these trousers from Zara because they're honestly one of my favourite pairs of trousers. Probably one of my favourite items for spring that I have in my wardrobe. They're so nice. I got them last year. I'm going to try and see if I can link some similar. I'm pretty sure I did see some on the Zara website. But honestly, these trousers just make every outfit look great. I love them. I am also just wearing my um, Adidas Samba trainers. I love how these look. Just peeking out of the bottom. Just the little neutral colours there. Peeking at the bottom, I think they look really nice. I've also just got a basic white t-shirt on. You guys will, you know, see me wear this so many times. Um, just a great staple base layer to have. And then I've just popped on my um, denim overshirt from H&M. I also love wearing this as like a double denim look, but I think wearing it um, almost like a jacket is just so nice for spring. I love blue and cream together, as I said. Just another way to use those two colours. And then I've just popped on my black Pauline handbag and then my Amazon cat eye sunglasses. Oh, and my belt is from Holland Cooper. I'm pretty sure you've seen me wearing outfits super similar to this in a recent vlog, but this is what I've just filmed. So it's my new white. Oh my gosh, look at that, where we've not painted this wall. Guys, honestly, I know how it looks, but we're going to get around to it this week. Um, so this denim maxi skirt is from Stradivarius. Love the fit of this. I just find these skirts really flattering. I really, really love them. And then I have just popped on my tan boots from Zara. Um, again, I've just kept on the white top that I had on with the last outfit. And then I'm also just wearing my khaki bomber jacket, also from Zara. And then I've popped on my little Fendi bag. I just love all these colours, all these tones together. Just gorgeous. Oh, and my sunglasses are from Mango. Okay, I think this outfit has to be a personal fave for me. I love the kind of sporty look to it. I love a cohort. I love a blazer. And I love these trainers. So this is definitely a favourite. I'm wearing my blue striped cohort from Jerf Avenue shirt and shorts combo these are so comfortable they're honestly like boxer shorts um, i wear them quite often um, in spring summer on their own not obviously as part of the cohort but together they do just look great um, just got a white t-shirt on as a bit of a base layer but you can easily take this off and do the shirt up i love that look as well but for today i've decided to pop a base layer on and then i'm wearing my beige blazer from anina bing Again, this blue and beige combination, I absolutely love for spring. I just like how it brightens up the darker blazer. And I think all the colours go really nicely with the sambas. I've also just popped on my Fendi bag. I like that the dark brown in the bag kind of brings out the dark brown on the bottom of the trainers. Yeah, this is definitely my kind of vibe for spring. I feel really like put together but still quite on trend um, and above all comfortable. This is such a comfortable outfit. I could happily go shopping all day, eat a big meal, be super comfortable but yeah look really nice and put together. And then these sunglasses, I think these ones are from Vela. Let me just check. There you go, that's how you spell it for those wondering V-E-H-L-A. They've honestly got some really lovely sunglasses. But yeah, this is my outfit, definitely a firm favourite. Big trend for this year is tailoring, so you've probably been seeing a lot of these kind of like waistcoat outfits. I love making like quite a formal looking piece of clothing, just look really casual. I'd say that was probably my style, just if I was going to put a nail in it, 
my, you know, business casual, that kind of vibe. It's definitely up my street. So I personally love this trend. So I'm just wearing my, I actually think the whole look is from Zara, my beige waistcoat from Zara. I actually bought this as a set. I bought um, the matching trousers um, last year. I wore it to a baby shower. And um, to be honest, I never considered wearing the waistcoat with anything else but the trousers. However, with this trend that um, has obviously come around now, it's really got me out of my um, out of my box with it, and I actually love how it looks with other trousers. This also looks great with jeans, but for this look, I have decided to pair it with my black trousers, also from Zara, um, just because I love um, the pop of black with the bag, with a little bit of black on the Samba trainers. I just love these colours again together. I'm just wearing my Coach tabby bag and then my trusty Amazon cat eye sunglasses. I'm really debating about getting the um, YSL cat eye sunglasses and just upgrading because I feel like these, these have had their day now. I've had these for literally years. I feel like it's time to take it to the next level. So yeah, let me know, put your vote below. Do I just go for it and buy the YSL ones or do I stick to my trusty £10 Amazon sunglasses? And then final outfit, I've gone for a really simple um, white linen shirt. Um, I'm pretty sure this whole outfit is from Zara as well, but white linen shirt. Um, I've left uh, the top two buttons undone just for like a more casual kind of vibe. And then I've just popped on some blue denim shorts, uh, my navy and white New Balance trainers and then my navy blue blazer from Zara as well. I love how the blazer kind of smartens up the denim shorts a little bit and just makes them look a little bit more formal. Um, I'm really on the lookout for a pair of denim shorts that look like this in terms of the length because the length and the fit around my thighs are really nice um, but I don't want the rips on the bottom. Um, I feel like I don't know, I feel like the rips make them look a little bit less like classic and make them look a little bit more trendy, whereas I want a more classic pair of denim shorts. Um, but yeah, I think Zara do have a pair on there at the moment. I'm gonna have to have a look, but yeah, I'm just not feeling the rips on these anymore. I just wish they were a bit more of a straight hem, but I do like the fit of them though, so I am gonna keep them. I do really like them. But anyway, that is the final outfit of my reel for today. So I am going to go downstairs now because I have a food shop arriving in a minute. So I need to be there to pack it all away. Does anyone else just get super happy when the food shop arrives? Because it just makes me feel like a proper adult. But quick rundown of the food shop, seeing as it has just got here. I've meal planned for the week. So uh, we didn't actually need that much in terms of dinners. A lot of this is kind of breakfast lunches. So we've got the pasta, some nanas, a couple of bits for the freezer, jacket potatoes, fish fingers, some ice lollies because Andy really wanted these. Uh, almond milk because I'm going to start doing um, a really nice breakfast that I was having when I was on holiday. Basically chia seed um, pudding with granola and fruit. Super healthy, really, really lovely and I enjoyed it so much on holiday that I thought, you know what, I'm going to carry on eating this when I'm at home. So I bought some bits. I'm going to try and make the pudding tonight um, so that it sets overnight and then I'll show you in the morning um obviously the finished breakfast but anyone that does have chia um chia seeds or like chia pudding for breakfast let me know some of your favorite recipes because i really want to start having this regularly so i'm gonna need some tips but anyway so i've got all the bits for that so i've got the granola the chia seeds um some blueberry powder to add a bit of flavor and do a blueberry version and i also saw this chocolate one so i thought i'd try and do that so that's what the almond milk is for few veggies for the fridge, hummus, fibre one bars, if ever I'm like craving a bit of cake or chocolate. Um, these are just great because they're low calorie and yeah, they do kind of like kick my craving. So I've got the birthday cake, lemon drizzle and the brownie flavour. few bits for the tin cupboard. I've got some um, white beans, some chickpeas just for different um, sort of salads. Uh, some sweet corn, beans, tomatoes. Also got my caramel drizzle that I have in my iced coffee. Can't live without this, it's so good. 
Good old Cheerios. Um, Andy wanted a cup of soup, so added that to the list. And then a few other bits. Got some cashew nuts. This is for one of the dinners for this week. I'm doing like a green, um, a green pasta, and that's for that. Yogurts for the fridge, some chicken, carrots, yogurt for breakfasts, milk, orange juice, and then some other bits for the fridge. Berries for um, my breakfast to go with like my chia pudding, kind of like breakfast bowl. Some greens and some tomatoes. I'd say that's a pretty good shop for the week. So I'm actually starving. I think I'm actually gonna crack open these and have a quick yogurt because then I need to get ready and go riding. So yeah, I'm gonna grab one of these now. Well, I don't know if you can tell by the light behind me, but it's suddenly gone very, very dark and it started raining. And Sod's Law is, I literally started working earlier this morning. Didn't even sit down to have breakfast. I've been working on the go, trying to cram in everything that I need to do so that I can do my riding. Basically my riding session that I had planned, I wanted to do some fast work with her. Basically, gallop. <laughs> Take around the fields for a good canter, a good gallop, just to assess where her fitness is at the minute. She's super fit, but I wanted to do that today. And sod's law is the second I put my riding gear on, the weather has turned around and gone, don't think so, started tipping down with rain. I'm so sick of this rain. Oh. I'm also really concerned that our first event, because it's on grass, I'm concerned that it's going to get cancelled if the weather carries on like this, because the ground just won't be safe to ride on. Oh, I just want it to stop. All we've had is rain. But anyway, so I unfortunately am not going to be able to do that today. And I have just checked, because we at our yard, we have like an online booking system for like hiring the like arenas to ride in. The indoor is booked and the other arenas are under maintenance today of all days so unfortunately it doesn't even look like i can ride which i'm really annoyed at because i didn't want to i really didn't want her to have today off oh you just can't judge anything with the weather if i'd have known it was going to be like this i would have got up early and rode early while it was nice lesson learned i just need to do it when the weather's nice but anyway i'm gonna go and see her anyway i think maybe i'll just give her a good groom do some stretches with her because you know like us horses need to stretch i'll do a bit of yoga with her and yeah probably come back and have some dinner that's put a bit of a dampener on my day i'm not gonna lie but oh well it's it's fine i'll go and just have have some pony cuddles instead <laughs> here in a minute she um, gets a little bit protective over me sometimes in the stable and she just puts her ears back at the horse next door look <laughs> telling him to stay away my mom's in the stable so just keep your distance but she's so sweet bless her but um yeah so this is me just doing some stretches with her she knows the drill with this she's so good um i just make her plant all four feet so she's not moving and she's just stretching her body right round there towards the treat just as a little bit of an incentive but um, I don't put any pressure on her. I'm not like forcing her head anywhere or touching her in any way. I'm just letting her balance herself um, and then reach round. And then when she's held the stretch for long enough, I reward her with the treat. 
Um, it's so good for them um, doing this. It's really good doing it after riding. It helps like improve their circulation, obviously, you know, their range of motion. Um, it also helps decrease any like muscle soreness. Um, as you probably know, um, tight muscles are more prone to injury. So think of me doing this as essentially like a yoga or a Pilates class for her. She's a very active horse. She's been in a lot of um, a lot of work over winter. Um, she does work hard, bless her. So I do like to treat her to these kind of stretching activities just to loosen her off a bit and yeah, just make sure she's not sore anywhere. She's so funny how she just knows this routine so well. But yeah, just a little insight as to what else goes on as well as the riding. And it's also really nice. It's a nice little bonding exercise as well. She seems to really enjoy it. So guys, this was the green pasta I was telling you about. It's basically pasta with broccoli and then the green kind of sauce that you can see is um, spinach, lemon juice, olive oil, a bit of salt and pepper, all uh, blended up in the blender into like a puree. Super nice, super healthy and then, oh, right on time. Andy's here, grating a bit of parmesan on the top because I know it's healthy pasta but you can't have pasta without a bit of parmesan can you and that is that guys super easy simple weekday dinner this is gonna kick kick my carbs cravings but i'm still getting some veggies in good morning guys i have just got ready for the day oh gosh my hair's a bit um a bit fluffy today oh um, but I'm just about to do my lips and I thought I would actually just quickly do it on camera because I have been wearing this new lip combo and I do sometimes get um, comments asking what I'm wearing on my lips so I thought let's do it together because this is just honestly I can see me wearing this a lot so it's the hourglass or oh, what's it called oh no it's like the volumizing lip it's basically like a lip balm, but there is a slight colour to it. I'll link it in the description box. Um, this is in the shade um, Trace. Oh, there goes the lid. So I've been wearing this, but with the lip liner MAC stripped down. I do also love it with Morphe Bite Me. But it's, um, I'd say that's more of an evening kind of shade. It's a little bit more intense because that lip liner is a little bit darker. Whereas this one... Um, God, I don't know what this side of my hair is doing. Ooh, move out my way. Whereas this is a little bit more of a daytime look. It's the lip product that I got when I was in Miami. I've been trying to get it since before Christmas. Can you believe that? And it's just been out of stock, but I managed to get hold of it. So I've just been loving it. So I'm just going to quickly line my lips with strip down. And I do just slightly overline my lips in the centre. But I always make sure to return like to my natural lip line before I reach the corner. Otherwise... If you overline your lips all the way to the corner, you get that weird, almost like clown-like smile. Do you know what I mean? It just doesn't quite look right. And then I always just sort of colour in my top lip. I don't know why. It's just a habit. I don't really know what difference it makes, but I do it and it makes me feel better. There we go, like that. And then I'll just um, add a little bit more just to the outer corners. There we go. Also, you'll have to excuse um, if you can see how dry my lips are. Um, they've been awful since I got back from Miami. I don't know whether it was the plane or, I don't know, maybe the pool, the chlor, I don't know, being in the sun. But they've really dried out and they're, oh, they're a bit sore. Anyway, this, oh, this is just so beautiful. If you can see, it's kind of like this gorgeous, nudey brown. It's not too brown. It's definitely more of a pinky brown. Oh, it's just beautiful. I just love it. You really don't need much either. Can you see that colour? It actually goes really nice with my top that I'm wearing today. It looks like much more of a natural kind of lip for the day. But as I said, if you do a darker brown lip liner, it's it really pops for like an evening look. It's so stunning. For now, this is the um, my lip lip of the day. I really love it. Right, I am now going to go and make myself some breakfast because I've done my overnight chia pudding. I'm so excited for my breakfast. I'm going to have like chia pudding, my oats, my fruit. Mmm, excited. Let's go and make it. So, moment of truth. Ooh, it's set. Let me just get 
me show you my little chia puddings that I made. There we go, that's better. So I made a purple blueberry one. So basically the essential ingredients for chia pudding is chia seeds, um, any kind of milk that you like. I personally think uh, milk like substitutes are always better. So almond milk is the one that I use. So chia seeds, almond milk, you need something to sweeten it. So either maple syrup or honey, I used honey. Um, a little bit of vanilla extract just for, again, a bit of flavouring. And then, yeah, you give them a good mix. You need to leave them for at least two hours to set. I like to use mason jars just because I feel like it's easier to mix them because you can shake them rather than like whisk. Um, I leave them overnight, but as I said, two hours is fine. And then for the blueberry one, I got this blueberry powder. Where's my blueberry powder? Here. So this is blueberry powder. You can literally add this to smoothies, yogurts. Really good for you. Just It's literally just blueberries. Um, but yeah, really good for you and great for flavouring things. So this is a normal cheer pudding. This is the blueberry one. I'm really feeling the blueberry one. So I'm going to have this today. Andy's going to have this one. Um, and yeah, I'm going to make some nice breakfast. Honestly, that is just the nicest breakfast and you feel so full because chia seeds, honestly, if you've not seen them before, they're tiny. And you look at them in this pudding, you kind of think, how is that going to fill you up? Because they expand and they absorb all the milk. I can't explain it. They actually make me feel full. And that's my problem. I am someone that I, I can't function unless I have breakfast. If I don't have breakfast, I'll just eat constantly throughout the day like I have to have a good breakfast in me to just set me up for the day and it's such a good breakfast kicks my sweet tooth craving with the fruit it fills me up I get like that bit of fiber as well I love the granola with it I get that crunch because I'm not also not someone that can just have a breakfast smoothie I have to have a crunch I have to eat I know I'll probably sound weird but I know there's so many of you that will relate I just I'm not a smoothie girl I like a smoothie alongside something else I can't survive off a smoothie for breakfast. I wish I could because I love smoothies. So having something like that for me, where I get everything and I get that bit of crunch, it's just perfect. But I've literally just had um, a delivery of a couple of parcels, not PR stuff that I've ordered. Um, so I thought I'd just quickly open these couple of bits with you as well. I've got um, a house purchase thing. Let me go and get it. So first of all, I've got this from you can see they're Blooming Artificial. Basically a website that specialise in doing faux plants, greenery, flowers, all that jazz for your home. Now, admittedly, I am not someone that is very good at keeping plants alive. If you buy me a nice bouquet of flowers, I'll put them here and I'll keep them alive. Plants around the house, honestly, they're dead to me the minute they're on the shelf. I know it sounds awful, but I forget. I literally forget. I see plants like decorative plants as like coffee table books you're lucky to get a dust right never mind the water i'm just not good let's get open oh watch my light oh god oh oh look the pot oh how nice is that pot like a bit of a rustic terracotta pot oh i think that's really nice i need to like have a play with the leaves and spread them out a little bit but at least this is a guaranteed plant that is not going to die how cute is that gonna look somewhere i don't know where i'm considering putting it in my dressing room or my filming room 
um, as more of like a bit of a pretty prop. Oh, hello. So one small plant in that massive box. Yeah, but I'm pretty sure I ordered two. Oh, there is two. <laughs> There's two in there. Did you like breakfast? Mm. Good. You full? Yeah, I like that. Ah, two of them. Yeah, I just thought these were really good. And if you are like me and struggle to keep the plant alive, I did actually buy one from my dressing room, a live plant, and um, RIP is all I can say. They're quite heavy, aren't they? Yeah, they're quite good, aren't they? Yeah, good there. No, you need something tall on the island to oh, like balance it out. And then, oh my gosh, next parcel. Oh, God, it's quite heavy. I mean, you're probably not going to be interested in this. This is horsey stuff, guys. So, I'll skim through this really quickly. Don't worry. I do want to open it because, oh, I want my stuff. These are my new stirrups for jumping because I only have one set of stirrups at the minute and I have to keep switching them over from my dressage saddle to my jumper saddle, which is really annoying. Oh my God, they're so gorgeous. So, I mean, these are going to mean absolutely nothing to you guys, basically where I put my feet either side of the saddle in these stirrups I've got some new ones so these are basically safety stirrups for me for jumping so that if let's not tempt fate touch wood if I was to fall off and my foot got stuck in the stirrup so let's say my foot fell through the stirrup and got stuck these snap open and let my foot come out so I don't get dragged around the field from by the horse that sounds so morbid when I say it out loud <laughs> So I don't get dragged by a horse. But that's why you buy safety stirrups. But yeah, great. Next, I have just bought her some, just some boots for her back legs, just to protect them while jumping, because I do have a pair, but they're slightly too small, ever so slightly. Um, and they don't match the front ones because they're from a different set, so. Boots for Flicker to protect her little legs. Oh, and then we have ice boots, which probably looks bizarre to most of you guys. So basically, this is for us for our competition season. So for eventing, I mean, they're really handy to have anyway. But basically, anything that asks the horse to do something strenuous or whatever situation the horse might be in where it's working super hard, a lot of heat goes into the horse's legs, which doing that again and again and again isn't great. So the main aim after you have finished whatever you're doing, so I might finish my cross country phase, my jumping phase in eventing, her legs will be really warm. Um, so you put cold things on her legs. You can either hose their legs off with water. Usually at a horse show, you don't have access to that. So ice boots, literally what the sound is in, ice in boots. You put them around the horse's legs and it returns them back to a normal temperature, cools them down, much better for the legs, really good in the long run for looking after the horse's legs. So I got some of these. So that's what I've ordered. And that's my little horsey haul. If I sound out of breath, it's because I am. I've just ran up these stairs <laughs> and um, I'm so unfit. Anyway, I have just come upstairs to the office because I need to get started. Oh, this is probably gonna be awful lighting, there we go. I need to get started on a little bit of editing. That light, I need to hold you up here to get the good light. Yeah, I'm definitely not gonna hold you up there. Um, so I've just brought upstairs with me. Nice little, ooh, don't wanna spill it. Nice little cup of tea and little fibre one bar to keep me going. And I've put on my grandma card again that Andy absolutely hates, but I love it. It's essentially like um, a second dressing gown for me. I just put it on over whatever outfit and it's like a big long blanket. I just love it. Um, but yeah, I, I just had to have a little rant on Instagram and that I actually am cringing for myself even saying that. I find that so embarrassing. I like, usually, Let's backtrack. If I get a hate comment or a, you know, trolling comment or, or you know, what, what, whatever, I am quite good at just not acknowledging it. I will delete block instantly. I don't, there's no like three strikes and you're out thing with me. If you're rude enough from the get go, you're gone. Because I think there's no need for it. Anyway, 
that mantra has you know served me well up until now i try not to dwell on negative comments or anything like that but i received a couple of comments um over the last sort of 24 hours um in regards to something that hasn't struck a nerve but it has it has annoyed me because it's something that i have put up with for a long time now um and that is calling me out for my accent which i think is the most bizarre thing in the world to call someone out for calling someone out because of the way they speak as you know that represents where they're from what county they're from what part of the country they're from is so weird to me it's very it feels very it's a it's proper accent snobbery it feels like classism to me you're labeling me as potentially not as intelligent as you because i don't have the same accent as you i just think in today's day and age if you're engaging with my videos you obviously have access to social media and the internet how is this like accent snobbery still a thing like having an ac having a birmingham accent doesn't mean i'm any different or less intelligent or it's just a really weird thing so that i would had a few comments a couple of them that stuck out to me in fact i'll read them to you because i just and i don't even want to be like giving these people the time of day let me just say that but i just think it's important to remember if you ever think twice about saying this to someone oh my god you look gorgeous thanks now wait for the slap in the face but work on your accent. I don't like it. Imagine leaving that comment. Work on your accent. I don't like it. That is just... <laughs> I've got a laugh. And then the next one. You dress well, but that accent is just a no-no. And then in speech marks, they've put item. So trying to insinuate that I don't say the word item correctly. And I say item. It's a bit like when you tell someone you're from Birmingham and then they have to repeat back Birmingham to you when they, and they sound like they're running out of batteries. Like that, guys. Now, don't get me wrong. I can take a joke, right? And I'm not a total snowflake. I know my accent might be a little bit jarring. And likewise, I find some accents a little bit jarring. I'd never call someone out for it. I'd never tell someone to change it because I didn't like it. Now, I have to put up with that and... I can do a polite smile and laugh to that, even though it's not funny. It's literally the response that everyone gives you. You know, whatever. That's fine. But it's this whole thing of, the, like, these comments in particular insinuating I should change or the accent is wrong is just bizarre to me. And I do think it shows... Sorry, I have been babbling on. I need, um, I need a sip of tea. One second. And I do think it shows that there's not enough representation online of people with regional dialects and regional accents from the uk you hear a lot of people from down um like southeast or london you don't hear that many people in my experience anyway it's not as common to hear regional accents online i feel like they just need better rep representation because people are so used to hearing the same this and this is me being you know just talking about english accents in particular I think people just hear like the Queen's English London well-spoken accent and it's like people forget that places outside London exist. Oh, but anyway, I'm not going to rant anymore. I've had my rant. I have my little rant over on Instagram. I just find it really mad that in this day and age that that is still a thing. But anyway, I think I'm going to leave this vlog here, guys, because I feel like it's been a long one. I hope you've enjoyed it anyway. It's been just more of a getting back into the swing of things kind of vlog next week i've got quite a lot going on so i have got a day that i'm going down to london i've also got a lot of home plans to share with you we've got the like mood boards and fabric samples paint samples everything so i can go through a lot of the fun changes coming up and um, i've been waiting for this uh, to kind of get all these bits together um, so that I can sit down and show you visually what we're going to be doing in the house, which is really exciting. It's going to be a really fun couple of months. And I'm also going cross-country schooling with Flickr. I know a lot of you guys really enjoyed the riding footage that I got last time I did that. Um, we're going somewhere different this time. So in preparation for our first, first event of the season, um, I'm taking her there. 
so yeah lots going on in next week's vlog but i hope you've enjoyed this little at home vlog with me but as always guys i'll see you in the next vlog i'm really sorry for the little random rant at the end i really don't like spouting out negative like any negative energy on this channel so i've just had to vent i feel like youtube very much feels like a safe space for me a much safer space than instagram and tiktok i don't know why that is i feel like my audience on youtube is a lot more not engaged but just loyal like i know so many of you do watch and maybe don't leave a comment or but i know some of you will dm me on instagram and yeah i just i feel like very safe on in like the youtube space so i'm sorry that i've had to share that little rant but you know what they say, a problem shared is a problem halved. I feel a bit lighter having got that off my chest. So yeah, but no more. Positive vibes only. But anyway, guys, I really hope you've had a good week. If you have got to this point in the vlog, well done. I'm sorry they seem to be getting longer. I don't know how I do it, but oh well. Um, if you don't like it, feel free to skip through. But anyway, guys, I'll see you in next week's vlog. Bye.